Hey everyone, welcome to Architecture for Thought. In this video, we'll take a look at ruled surface geometry, and I'll show you how I used it to turn this into this. The purpose of this video is to emphasize how understanding geometry can make you a more versatile designer. I do also think there's a very interesting conversation that needs to be had about an emergent era of what I'm calling raster architecture, which I believe will emerge from 3D printing models based on AI-generated content. But these traditional geometric principles have been around for a very long time, so I do think it's worth investing some time to become familiar with. If you're currently an architecture student or deciding if you should apply for architecture school, I can tell you that my familiarity with complex geometries at a young age was extremely useful throughout my undergraduate experience, especially in terms of 3D modeling physical model making, and general spatial problem solving. Each institution operates according to unique mission statements that characterize the school's agenda. Some more than others focus on geometric explorations, but ultimately, architecture is fundamentally about synthesizing form and function into habitable or performative structures. So hopefully you can see why understanding geometry will be an important part of your future. For those just entering the workforce or looking to advance their career by taking on a lead design role, understanding how to apply efficient and effective geometry to a project is a great way to prove a design's feasibility. Designating material yield, detailing proper offsets, and communicating framing instructions are all ways I've used my advanced understanding of geometry to take the lead as a project architect and design director. And finally, for those who already have extensive experience dealing with advanced geometries relating to architecture, you probably already know how it's benefited your career, but this information may offer some insight to new geometric principles, or at least offer a unique perspective on methods you're already familiar with. Every shape you see in this design can be unrolled into a flat surface. This type of geometry is also known as a developable surface, and is most commonly seen on the shape of a cone. Many architects utilize these principles to bring complex forms to life, while other designers have built their entire portfolio based on explorations with this geometric styling. I've come across some really interesting literature, which I will link in the description, regarding the efficiency of ruled surfaces as they relate to construction costs and ease of assembly. And I also want to note how this geometry is not the same as double curved surfaces, which more closely resemble the surface of a sphere. There are fabrication technologies that make double curved surfaces more feasible, and in effect, have become more common in architectural design. But ruled surfaces still remain more common and easier to achieve based on readily available materials. There are several ways to create developable surfaces, starting with the very fundamental push-pull or parallel projection intersection technique, and advancing to a loft command that most 3D programs have in their toolbox. Then there is the why. Why curved surfaces? This is actually a topic that deserves its own chapter because there are many levels of reasoning or justification, starting with the personal agenda, scaling up to the societal perception, and arriving at global or universal philosophies that require more time to discuss. In the case of this remodel, the curves took on a machined aesthetic, which was heavily influenced by a surprise we discovered while researching the building's history. An existing curved laminated beam ran the entire length of the primary elevation, which in my eyes offered a unique opportunity to capitalize on an existing curved building component. And considering my familiarity with geometry and knowledge of construction, I knew I could propose a design that would be financially feasible and look like a high-end customized project. For anyone who lives in the Midwest, especially the Great Lakes region, you may be familiar with these barrel roof buildings. They are artifacts of the old Kohl's food stores, most of which have been converted or demolished. And apparently, there is an entire subculture dedicated to documenting these historic buildings. I used the curved roof shape to drive the top geometry. We extended an airfoil type projection from the laminated beam and transitioned it into a newly cantilevered canopy at the pedestrian level. This gesture was modeled with lofted geometry, 
between two splines, which can then be easily documented in elevation and section for construction purposes. I wanted the swooping upper canopy to appear weightless, or at least as if it were hovering gently above these two aeronautic shaped pillars. These pillars also conceal the anchor points at both ends of the curved laminated beam. This is also where the ruled geometry came into play, as I sculpted the pillars to negotiate multiple points of alignment. This created some rather unique angles and curves that needed to be modeled and documented with precision in order to communicate the shapes to the contractors for construction. Lastly, we replaced the curtain wall system with a new one, providing better thermal performance and an updated appearance regarding mullion spacing and my favorite detail, the curved glass profile. This detail did cost a little extra, but only in the range of about $5,000, which fortunately the owner agreed was worth it. I hope this provides some insight into how understanding geometry can be used to your advantage as a designer. Whether you're just beginning or interested in designing with more curves, there's not really a standard path for implementing these techniques in professional practice. But with the right approach, curvilinear designs, particularly ones with ruled surfaces, can be a cost-effective way to produce unique architectural geometry. Let me know if this topic resonates with you, and if you'd like to see more content focused on how to design and document curvilinear architecture. As it relates to emerging programs such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, and 3D printing, I do believe experience with the legacy format of design and documenting curves can help with prompt engineering and other advanced areas of form fabrication. Becoming familiar with terminology, approaches, methods, and techniques for producing curved architecture will broaden your toolbox for geometry-based problem solving. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.